Like a ghost Like the moon Like a god Like the truth I'll be watching from a distance I'll be watching from a distance Don't be deceived. All right, time to get to work. Real shocker here. Another pickup from the thrift store. This fabric I am using to test out that pattern that I made last week. First up, I'm doing the front panel. So I'm going to double that over, of course, the usual routine, pinning on first to trim. Notice these two blue lines here, or the blue line and then the outside. I'm going to start by first trimming around the outside. Okay. Now, this is the front, right? And then I want this side a little bit further in for the zipper, which means that this is the side that I have to trim out, right? And so as I mentioned just a second ago, the reason I'm doing these two slightly different is so that way it adjusts for the, for the zipper, for tucking in on the one side so that the flap can go over top. So fold that in first. Double it up once again for the back piece. Now this has to be a bit wider because there's considerably more fabric around this area. See that? Although I am a little worried that this may be a bit wide. So we'll see. Let me, let me cut this pattern together and then and then I'll uh, have my judgments. This was a 1950s pattern after all, so things were a little looser back in the day. Next up is the fly, and I need three pieces of that. So I got the one there and then I'm going to double this one up because the one side needs two so that way the right sides will be showing on both of those. First order of business is putting on the zipper. So I've aligned roughly my two front pieces and then the end of the zipper is there so I want to sew right up until there okay I find that the best technique is to do the front of the fly first or the flat part the top that covers up the zipper so that's the side that I'm sewing right now. Another two pieces for that total of three that we're talking about earlier. These are just test pants, so I'm just going to run a straight stitch around. And this is for the underside of the zipper. Now I want to attach that flap onto here, but I also got to include the zipper so then I can lay it flat this way. Yeah. And then the zipper goes like this, there. I'm going to align that. And then I'm going to put this on top this way, like that. Align that with the top there as well. 
put that back down and run it one more time. Give this a quick top stitching. Now I just have to attach this, this side of the zipper to the front of the pant. Make sure that, yeah, that looks right. Okay, hold that in place. Take one of my pins. And then I want to go through, but I want to make sure I don't go through the bottom piece. And so now I want to stitch this. So I got to bring the zipper down again. Ooh, okay. Flip everything out of the way. Now let me check to make sure nothing moved on me while I was sewing. So if I do that, I zip it closed. How does that look? Very pant-like, I would say. The last step to just about everything, some top stitching. Right, I lied, there is one more step. Connect this back flap so it's not all loose and dangly. It's not my most beautiful work to date, but not looking to win awards here. Moving on to the back pieces, you notice how there is this slit at the top? Fold that over, and then I'm gonna run a seam along that. And the point for that is that it adds a little pleat in the back so that uh, it curves and hugs bum bum. Now I do want to give this a nice pressing. I find that with pleats, it's very important to do that. Otherwise, it bubbles a bit strangely. All right, align these two. Right sides facing each other. Run a seam along the back. Right down the butt crack. Got my back panel here, and then now the front one, and I'm gonna have right sides facing each other. Line it up at the crotch, pin that on, go down the rest of the inside of the leg. Do the same thing on the inside of the other leg. And while I'm at it, I might as well pin the outside of the legs as well. Get it all done. And then I can stitch in one go. So I ran the stitches both on the inside of the legs and on the outside. Now there's no waistband on here, but I think that's okay. I just want to test to see how they actually fit. Okay, so first reaction, a little big at the top, so I'm gonna have to take out some of that. Around to the back, that feels fine. And then the biggest thing is right in through the thighs. There's just too much fabric. And then once I get to about the knee, it's good. So I took out all the stitches that I ran both on the outside of the leg and on the inside, and then adjusted the pants. I'm going to start off with the back here. Let me just lay this out really nice and flat. But what I do want to do is bring it in 
by two inches. Uh, actually, no, let's say I'm gonna bring it in by one and three quarters. So up to here. Slope it down a little straighter and then curve it out like this. So it's a little straighter like that. And then slowly taper out. Let me move that up a little bit. And then taper it out until I get to the knees. Trim along that line that I just drew. And go up to the top with that line. And then I also want to do a little adjusting on the front. And now with this one, I don't want to do quite as much taking out of the front. But what I do want to do is take out about three quarters of an inch. Just make this arch a little deeper like that. And then bring this line also down to the knee. And then now I have to redo the stitches where I just cut. So that's the butt taken care of. The stitch on the outside of the leg and, now this, and then the stitch on the inside of the leg. That's what I gotta do. I'm gonna try these babies on one more time. Much better. I still have to work out the front here. You see that V pulling thing happening? I have to adjust them a little bit. I think if I bring the zipper in a little bit, that will solve that problem. Um, a little bit of pulling under the crotch area. So I gotta adjust that. In the back here, I'm getting a little bit of a V downward, so I'm gonna have to adjust the pattern up a little bit just to straighten that out. But I would say through the legs though, in through here, I think I've got that quite nice. So finessing. I think finessing is what is left to do with this pattern. Let's close it out with a new segment one that I'm calling Checking In With Corn's Crops. Well, the segment isn't new. I've been checking in for a month now, but the title's new and I'm making it official. I know that tomatoes get big and I had assumed they're gonna be taking over this whole desk, but they're far from mature. They're already up to my chest level. I don't even know if I'm gonna have enough room on here after all. These beans though, I planted six of them Four of them sprouted. There's a total of three sprouts now, each of them with two, so I got six more beans. And they're currently in the maturing phase, so they're gonna dry out. I guess I'm coming out even, but a little disappointed there. The basil's been growing slow and steady. The other day I clipped off the tops of them so that that way they start growing out in between the leaves and it bushes out a little bit more rather than flowering. Ooh, bruschetta, in my future you will be delicious. Much like the tomatoes, this arugula is really thriving. I also had to clip off the flowers on the top because they were blooming as well and I want more foliage. And it looks like I'll probably, if you look real close, you'll see that there's more blooming there. So once again, just clip that off. It's like neutering them. Sorry. As for this parsley in the back here, we're coexisting. I don't think they like the indoors so much. Yeah.
saying that I desire. It's not a freestyle, cause this shit in my brain. Prepare for a life, cause this shit come with pain.